Let me introduce you to Sir Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz, two famous yet controversial figures in history. Newton and Leibniz were 17th century mathematicians, born merely three years apart. Newton on Christmas Day 1642 in Lincolnshire, England, while Leibniz was born on July 1st 1646 in Leipzig, Saxony, or today part of Germany. This happened to be at a time known as the Period of Enlightenment, as countless great minds were at work all at once, discovering and solving mathematical, astronomical and philosophical dilemmas. This included Galileo and his invention of a telescope, Kepler and his work in planetary motion, Voltaire's advocacy for freedom of speech, and even Thomas Newcomen's invention of a steam engine powered by coal. Yet, Newton and Leibniz are considered to be two of the most groundbreaking mathematicians of all time, and often thought as the inventors of calculus. So what is calculus, and what did they do to make it so darn useful? So what is calculus? The branch of mathematics that deals with the finding and properties of derivatives and integrals of functions, by methods originally based on the summation of infinitesimal differences. Calculus is thought to have possibly originated as far back as 1820 BC with ancient Egyptian calculations of area and volume, while in 250 BC existed the great Archimedes, who would be the first to determine the tangent of a curve. Going back to the definition, however, one of Newton and Leibniz's biggest contributions was the use of infinitesimals in their calculations. Infinitesimals are numbers bigger than zero, yet smaller than the absolute value of any real number and were necessary in the analysis of continuous functions. Though they were often criticised as being weak and philosophically incorrect, as they were both numbers that existed and yet could not be given exactly, furthermore, Newton would be credited with the calculation of the derivative of a function which gives the slope at any point of a function. Newton was also well known for his practical use of mathematics. He was one of the first mathematicians to implement this calculus on real physical problems, rather than focusing on theories and conceptual practices. Therefore, this aided him in his monumental breakthroughs in physics and furthering ideas of planetary motion. Leibniz's work, on the other hand, is present in our studies almost every time we use calculus. He was the first to use the symbols dx and dy to represent infinitely small or infinitesimal increments of x and y, as well as the notation for the integral, which is still found to be the most effective calculus notation to this day. With all this said and done, however, is it enough for the pair to be recognised as the inventors of calculus? As we already saw, the use of calculus can be traced back as far as the ancient Egyptians and Archimedes. And they certainly weren't the only contributors to calculus before Newton and Leibniz. Let me introduce to you Monsieur Fermat. And Isaac Barrow. Fermat, a French mathematician, born somewhat 40 years prior to Newton, aided both Newton and Leibniz's work greatly in his development of a method for determining maxima and minima, as well as discovering how to reduce the integral of general power functions to the sums of geometric series. As for Isaac Barrow, he is credited with one of the first full proofs of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Oh, and did I also mention he was a tutor to Newton? which would suggest that Newton gained a fair amount of his calculus knowledge from Isaac Barrow. In his 1992 book Calculus Gems, mathematics professor George F. Simmons wrote, The invention of calculus is often credited to Newton and Leibniz, whose ideas and methods were not published until about 20 years after Fermat's death. However, if differential calculus is considered to be the mathematics of finding maxima and minima of functions and drawing tangents to curves, then Fermat was the true creator of this subject as early as 1629, more than a decade before either Newton or Leibniz were born. With his usual honesty in such matters, 
Newton stated, in a letter only discovered in 1934, that his own early ideas about calculus came directly from Thermatt's way of drawing tangents. It is clear that even Newton himself did not hide the fact that elements of his work on calculus were based on the labour of his predecessors. What's more, Leibniz is accused for not inventing the principle of continuity, but rather just clarifying the work of Kepler. In his 1947 work, The History of Mathematics, Theorist Boyer writes, Leibniz gave the doctrine of continuity clarity of formulation, which had previously been lacking, and perhaps, for this reason, regarded it as his own discovery. The terms and vendors are beginning to seem a little far-fetched now. As we've discovered, the pair certainly weren't the first to dabble in the subject of calculus, nor were they completely original in their ideas, taking bits and pieces of others' work in the development of their own. So what could have caused the brandishing of such a notorious title? While well, Newton is certainly no stranger to most people with any basic knowledge of history, he is worldwide famous and was particularly loved within the science community at the time. Remember, this is the man who discovered gravity, as well as write the three laws of motion, arguably two of the most significant discoveries to this day, and a large part of why he's so highly regarded. Furthermore, at that time, the world was also viewed from an Orientalist perspective. This meant that a lot that was being developed simultaneously outside of Europe and North America was often being disregarded and even stolen by Western thinkers. It is therefore extremely plausible that the title invented of calculus was credited to both Newton and Leibniz by their peers in the field of science, who praised them so highly for their other discoveries, and so felt it fit to unfairly tribute them with such a label. So all in all, this begs the question, do Newton and or Leibniz deserve to be known as the inventors of calculus? Well, does any one chef deserve to be credited with the invention of Italian food? In my opinion not, but it's up to you to decide.